Is it time to switch? GarageBand for iOS is incredible. It's easy to use, has some great built-in sounds and features, is updated frequently, and, well, you can't argue with that price point. I've been using it for years, over a decade at this point, and I love it. There may come a point, however, when you start to feel a bit limited by its, well, limitations, and start to look for more powerful iOS DAW alternatives. So in this video, I'm going to compare some of GarageBand's more limiting features to those found in the DAW I think 99% of GarageBand users should, when and if they're ready, move on to Logic Pro for iPad. Now, this is GarageBand for iOS and Logic Pro for iPad I'm going to be talking about specifically. If you're a GarageBand for Mac user, keep your eyes peeled for a Mac version of this video coming to the channel at some point in the future. In GarageBand for iOS, you can use a maximum of 32 tracks in a project, and for some people that's absolutely more than enough. If you're getting to the stage where you're creating larger projects with multiple vocal layers, large multi-track rhythm sections, etc., you might start to want more tracks to work with. In Logic Pro for iPad, you can add 256 instrument tracks and more audio tracks beyond that. Theoretically, anyway. Depending on the model and what plugins, etc., you have loaded, I think you'd possibly hit the performance ceiling of your iPad before creating a 200 plus track project. But you're still getting access to a whole lot more tracks than in GarageBand. This is an area where GarageBand actually does some stuff a little bit better than Logic Pro for iPad does. GarageBand's touch instruments are one of the app's best features. The work and care that went into designing each individual touch instrument and how you play them is really obvious. Not to mention GarageBand's version of the Alchemy synth. It puts a lot of third-party iOS synthesizers to shame and has an ever-growing library of sounds and patches thanks to Apple's regular sound pack updates. Logic's instrument selection and how you play them is just on a whole different level though. It has full versions of Logic Pro for Mac's powerful studio instruments like studio strings, studio piano and studio horns. Vintage instruments like the lovely vintage Mellotron and loads of excellent synthesizers like the ES1, Sculpture and Sample Alchemy. And you can play all of these instruments using any of the five available play surfaces. Keyboard, drum pads, fretboard, chord strips, and guitar strips. GarageBand's instruments are good, but Logic Pro for iPads are just incredible. GarageBand's selection of stock and built-in effect plugins isn't great, honestly. The default compressor gives you some bare bones sliders to work with, while the stock visual EQ only allows you to adjust three EQ points, and there is no way to adjust what type of EQ curve they have. Other effect plugins like Chorus, Reverb and Distortion are similarly bland and bare bones, which is a shame seeing how much effort clearly went into designing the UI of GarageBand's excellent touch instruments. You're also quite limited by how many plugins you can have active on a track at once. You can add a maximum of four extra plugins to a track, and that's it. Unless you're using a guitar or bass guitar patch, in which case you can only add one extra plugin. Third-party plugins do a good job of filling the gaps in GarageBand's stock plugin lineup, but who wants to spend money to get access to a good quality EQ? Logic Pro for iPad stock plugin lineup is amazing and one of the main selling points of the app in my opinion. A lot of its stock effect plugins make the need for third-party apps obsolete. 
its stock compressor is fully featured and really flexible. Logic's stock EQ is as good as the one found in the desktop version and better than the vast majority of third-party options available. We wrote our names. Unique plugins like Beatbreaker reorders incoming audio in real time, allowing you to slice up your sounds, rearrange them and add scratching and stuttering effects. Contech Room Simulator provides an incredibly accurate recreation of a classic hardware effect. And the built-in mastering assistant gives Logic Pro for iPad users a really convenient and easy to use way to finalize their projects. If you're familiar with other AI mastering services like Lander, DistroKids Mixia or BandLab's free online mastering, then you'll know the score here. It's a brilliant feature and one you won't see in any other iOS DAW. This is a big one and may well be the reason why you're thinking about moving on from GarageBand. GarageBand for iOS has no mixer or mixing view. And you know what? That's totally fine. For smaller projects or demos, I actually prefer the simplicity of just working track to track. I do start to feel quite limited in larger projects or projects where I double or triple up vocals and or guitars. Having to duplicate effects and things over multiple tracks is quite monotonous, to me anyway. Logic's Mixer makes working with larger projects so much easier. You have access to what is essentially a fully featured mixing console, complete with channel strips, volume faders, pan controls, plugins, sends and loads more. You can also group tracks together and apply effects like reverb to them all simultaneously. When it comes to mixing a project, having all of these controls in one place beats working with GarageBand's singular track controls, hands down. This is something that I think should have already been added to GarageBand for iOS, and I can't really understand why it hasn't been. So in GarageBand for iOS, you can automate the volume of a track using an automation curve. And that's it, just, just volume, that's all you can automate. In GarageBand for Mac, you can automate pretty much any parameter you want, panning, note velocity, even specific controls on a plugin. And that's the case in Logic Pro for iPad as well. You can automate pretty much every parameter you could ever want to. There are two different types of automation in Logic Pro for iPad. Track automation that you can access in the tracks area. This affects an entire track and any regions that are on it. If you move, re-record or copy slash paste regions in a track, the automation will stay in the place you created it in the track. And there's region automation, which is unsurprisingly embedded in a region. If you delete or overwrite the region, you'll lose the automation. If you move the region around though, the automation you've created will move with it. It's ridiculously powerful stuff. If you want to find out a bit more about Logic Pro for iPad, I have a whole second channel devoted to it. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. And if you're a die-hard GarageBand for iOS fan who's sitting there absolutely furious after all that, watch this video next where I talk about five things that GarageBand for iOS can do that Logic Pro for iPad can't.